seven-day-old newborn boy is brought to your clinic by his parents for several hours of bilious vomiting. He had an uneventful, full-term gestation and no significant medical or family history. The patient's physical examination reveals a distended and tender abdomen. Vital signs are stable and within normal limits, but the baby appears uncomfortable. Laboratory studies show a leukocytosis with a left shift. Which of the following tests is the gold standard for the diagnosis of this patient's condition? The correct answer is an upper gastrointestinal study for this infant that most likely has malrotation with midgut volvulus. This surgical emergency occurs in 1 in 6,000 live births. It is a condition resulting from failure of the midgut, small bowel, right colon, and one-third of the transverse colon to undergo appropriate rotation and retroperitoneal fixation during embryonic development. The result is that the intestines can twist, resulting in volvulus and eventual bowel ischemia. Approximately 80% of cases of malrotation with midgut volvulus present in the first month of life, with the majority occurring in the first week. The classic presentation is an infant with bilious vomiting. An upper GI study is the gold standard for diagnosis of malrotation with midgut volvulus, showing a characteristic corkscrew appearance of the jejunum. However, it should only be obtained in patients that are hemodynamically stable. A toxic appearing or hemodynamically unstable patient should undergo immediate surgical exploration. In addition to operative repair, management of malrotation with midgut volvulus includes fluid resuscitation, nasogastric tube placement to decompress the stomach, and broad-spectrum antibiotics. An abdominal X-ray may show findings of bowel obstruction and a dilated stomach and duodenal bulb, which are both suggestive of malrotation with midgut volvulus. However, radiographs are normal in 20% of cases. An air contrast enema has limited utility in cases of malrotation. However, it is both diagnostic and therapeutic for intussusception, which classically presents with colicky abdominal pain, vomiting, and rectal bleeding, but not bilious emesis. Ultrasound is used as the initial examination for both screening and diagnosis in many institutions. It may be diagnostic for malrotation without volvulus, but is more specific and sensitive for the diagnosis of malrotation with midgut volvulus. If the ultrasound is positive for volvulus, the patient should be taken directly to surgery without further imaging. If the diagnosis is not clear, a limited upper GI series to view the duodenum should be performed. If you like this case and enjoy medical cases like this one, check out Clinic, which is our new subscription-based web application, where each week, we present you with new clinical encounters and multiple choice questions based on a variety of medical pathology, from common disorders to the rarest diseases. Each week, your digital clinic is loaded with brand new cases, which are carefully crafted by our team members, exposing you to medical pathology you otherwise might not have had a chance to see or learn about at school or in your clinical practice. Subscribing to the Clinic app is also a great way to support this channel, allowing us to keep creating great medical educational videos, interactive software, and more medical cases like this one, for free on YouTube or at an affordable price on our website. But if you don't feel strongly about supporting us this way, that's okay. We still would like to show our appreciation to everyone who has continued to show their support for this channel over the years. And as a token of our appreciation, we've created a free collection of medical cases that you can access on our website. Just sign up for a free med school account by visiting the link in the description below. After you've successfully registered, you'll be redirected to the free collection landing page where you could add the collection to your account. And from here, you could immediately start testing your medical knowledge with the various clinical encounters found in this collection. You'll also have unlimited access to this collection so you can repeat and attempt these cases as many times as you would like forever.